Welcome to the Tom's River Show. Pat Amelia here. Good to be back. Back from our holiday hiatus. I hope everybody had a good uh, Christmas season, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all of the, uh, the religious celebrations at the end of the year around the Christmas holidays. Hopefully you're having a very good, happy, and healthy New Year's. Staying away from COVID. Tell you what, there are more people with COVID now than before uh, when it first broke out. It, it is astonishing how many people have COVID right now. Uh, people close to me, for that matter. I'm surprised so far I don't have it. I'm vaccinated. I got one booster in me. Um, I have relatives uh, who have uh, COVID that I've been with recently. I keep taking my temperature and all. I feel fine. Uh, I had to take a family member to the urgent care on 37. They had COVID. And, you know, what's funny? We go in, and the woman looks and says, yeah, you have COVID. You have COVID eyes. This is before the test. <laughs> you have COVID eyes. I'm like, what about me? Yeah, no COVID eyes, fortunately. Uh, uh, took the test. Sure enough, COVID positive. Um, so be careful. Yeah, I'm not a big believer in the mask. I don't think that does anything. But if you feel better with it, do it. Try to stay away from it. And I, I really do. And the only place I really go into any crowds is like ShopRite. So, yeah, I try. All right, like I said, we're back from the holidays. January has been very good to us so far. So it was December, no, no snow. We haven't had any, like, zero weather days. Um, I think the middle of this January, supposedly the, the, the coldest day of the month is in the middle of January. I, I really am more concerned about February. That's usually we get a lot of snow and cold. Once you get past February, you can start coasting, you know, spring training starts. Yeah, the activities up on the boardwalk and seaside. We'll be talking about that later. Don't forget to follow us on Livestream Vimeo. We archive all of our shows there. We archive quite a bit of them on uh, YouTube, for that matter. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Love us, subscribe to us, like us, all that sort of thing. Today we're going to be talking about the SEBA development. There's a meeting that Mayor Mo Hill is going to have um, in January. We're going to talk about the, the return of George Gilmore. He is back. He is roaring back. We're going to talk about uh, quick hits. I'm going to talk about Rite Aid on Route 37 with shopping carts. Um, my daughter's engine blew uh, coming down the seaside on Christmas Day. We're going to talk about the shops that are involved in repairing it. Talk about the Seaside Heights Boardwalk. they got a big board replacement program going on and a new show coming. All that, as, as they say, all that and more when we come back. You're watching the Tom Driver Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Stevens Jersey City Ford, certified parts and service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital ER, police or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for safe haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven. We're back. Pat O'Melia here, Tom's River Show. My coffee in a styrofoam cup. But I might, you know, styrofoam, and of course we have the plastic bag, ban, ban, styrofoam, plastic straws. You go to the movie theater, they, they give me a paper straw, a straw and a, a plastic cup. Uh, so I, I'm really, I got a problem with that. The, the recycling and the plastic bag ban, all that sort of stuff. I don't have a problem with the plastic bags, actually. I have a problem with banning paper bags. You know, plastic bags are flowing, flying around the street. You ride over them, gets caught in your, you know, your accessory drive, your fan belts and all. 
But there was a piece on YouTube I just seen about recycling. It actually costing municipalities more to recycle than it's worth. And yeah, there's a lot of land. You should just watch it. John Stossel, uh, he does the piece. And uh, yeah, even Greenpeace says, you know, we, we can't recycle all the plastic. But it's, it's worth looking at because we're spending a ton of money on recycling. Uh, Mayor Mo Hill and um, Council President Latano, they're going to be hosting a uh, meeting at the Tom River North High School, the Tom River High School North Auditorium. Uh, they're calling it the Community Speakout. Okay. Uh, this meeting is going to be held on January the 25th at 6 p.m. at the Tom River High School, as I said, in the auditorium, uh, Tom River High North Auditorium. Uh, the mayor is asking the public to attend, and you really should. Get your voice heard. Um, express your opinion on what's happening with this development because Tom's River got little say and sway in what's happening with that huge piece of property that has been uh, you know, a problem for Tom's River for years after it was discovered that <laughs> it was killing people with the, uh, the illegal dumping. Let your voice be heard. Go to the meeting. Hear what's going on. Uh, push your politician to uh, fight this um, uh, future plan for the land. Really, Tom's River needs to have a say in this. You know, the Tom's River needs to have a say in the future of this site, and I often refer to Jersey City when I'm talking about issues with Tom's River because Tom's River is like a, a smaller Jersey City. It's the exact similar, very similar problem um, that goes on in Jersey City, uh, you know, Mayor Fuller. The, the ninth year up there is uh, the mayor. Uh, he has dealt with a lot of situation, and a very similar situation here. Um, years ago, uh, there was a piece of land. Now, you're all from Jersey City, Tom's River. It, it's, it's, I don't need seven degrees of separation to find Jersey City and Tom's River people. If you remember the Roosevelt driving site where you know Great Easton was, uh, Roosevelt Stadium was off to the left, um, there was ball fields and trucking companies in the back. You probably took your driver's test in what is called the Honeywell site alongside the, the banks of the Hackensack River. Uh, basically, Culver, Culver Avenue to Danfit, big piece of property there. Like I said, it was the Roosevelt driving was there. It was heavily polluted. We didn't know it as kids. We went to Roosevelt driving all the time. Uh, and what amazes me, somebody stole my father-in-law's car back in 79 or so. And this, all this land was closed at that point. It fences up. I'm trying to find where my father-in-law's car is. I know it was dumped somewhere um, because I was a Jersey City kid. We did things we shouldn't. You know, I climb over this fence, and I'm looking at the Roosevelt driving land. And it's, the driving still there. It's just close. I mean, like, the, uh, the land was like, like volcanoes were, <laughs> were growing there. Um, Jersey City got very involved with the, the site cleanup. The Honeywell site is... It, it was called Honeywell bought the property. Um, and I'm going to give Fulop a major, Mayor Fulop a major uh, prop here and uh, credit for what is happening there. But a lot happened with the civic organizations in Jersey City who pushed for that cleanup. A lot of civic organizations. What Jersey City did, it got involved. I mean, you know, Fulop would have gotten into a fist fight with the Honeywell people if they weren't going to do what he seen as the future of that site. And Mayor Fulop. Um, he went all in on this site. The city had sway, say they eventually took control of that land. There's a price for the control of that land. It is a huge piece of property on the banks of the Hackensack River. You know, it's, 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 the Jersey City property is ridiculously expensive right now. So any property in Jersey City is worth big bucks. Um, the Honeywell site is now referred to as Bayfront. And Mayor, it's a big gamble with Jersey City. Mayor Fuller took, took control of that land. They bought land. They bought the land from Honeywell, uh, $135 million or so they bonded for. Mayor Fuller is heading up with his uh, city and his administration, the development of that site. There is going to be around 7,000 units of housing on that site. There will be the light rails going in there. And in that 7,000-plus units of housing, 35% of it will be affordable because Jersey City is leading the charge. They took control of the land. They're, they're driving the development of that land. There'll be public and private development there. It is a huge gamble, but this gamble by Mayor Fuller looks like it will pay off for the city. You know, they bonded. It looks like we'll get the money back for the bonding, and there will be 35% of 7,000-plus units of affordable housing on a site that was, you know, it was a Superfund site. 
that's what has to happen in Tom's River. You need – Mo Hill should be calling Mayor Fulop as to what he did there. Uh, and, again, it was a gamble by Mayor Fulop, but this is going to pay off. You need to have a say in what happens on that site with SEVA. Don't sit on your hands because that site's going to be here forever. It will affect your property value. It will affect your future. So make sure on January the 25th your voice is heard, your opinion is heard. Push Mo Hill and the Tom's River Council people and your elected officials county-wise and state-wise to get involved. Like I said earlier, you need to have say and sway on what happens on that site. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at HannahPintoDevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. We're back, Tom's River Show. Yes, I'm here, Pat O'Melia, Tom's River Show. You there, I do this because of you. My sole concern is to inform you, educate you, and maybe entertain you a little bit. Like I said, that meeting is at the Tom's River High School North in the auditorium, January the 25th at 6 o'clock. Be there. Make the difference that the people of Jersey City did with the Roosevelt Drive-In site, which is now Honeywell, which is now referred to as the city owns it as Bayfront. And it's going to be a huge development site there. Private and uh, public partnership, affordable housing, market rate housing, all that, all the housing. Phillips getting the light rail driven in there, so it's, Mayor Phillip makes things happen. Um, you might even be a governor. You never know. You might, that might be coming. Uh, George Gilmore, speaking of people who have, will have a hand in the next governor of New Jersey, George Gilmer has roared back, as you know. He took control of uh, the, the Ocean County uh, GOP, the Republican Party here in uh, Ocean County. I think he won by, what was it, 13 votes, 12 votes? He pulled it off. He beat Mike Mashinati, which in the long run for Mike Mashinati, Sheriff Mashinati, it is better. He is a cop's cop. He should only be the sheriff. He is a great sheriff. Uh, but George has roared back. And he roared back in Manchester recently. Uh, I, I thought the incumbent would pull that out. But no, that did not happen. It looked like the independents and the Democrats in Manchester went for uh, race, is his name. Um, he, is, he was the challenger to the incumbent, backed by uh, George Gilmore and radio host Bill Spadia, who will probably also take a shot at running for governor. And you can bet your bottom dollar he'll get the line in Ocean County, George uh, uh, Bill Spadia. Not only has George roared back, and the lion has teeth, uh, Gilbo not only won in Manchester, but he's also now putting his influence on the Ocean County commissioners, rightfully so. You know, they, they, in my opinion, they, they lost a lot of direction. You need some new blood there. And, in, of course, when you need new blood, who do you go to? You go to probably the oldest person on the board, but probably the biggest pom-pom guy for Ocean County, my buddy Joe Picari. Joe is a Hall of Fame commissioner slash freeholder, the old title. Uh, I think he's been the freeholder for 38 years or commissioner for 38 years, and he's up for election again. There is no better, bigger supporter of Ocean County than Joe Ficari. And what a difference a year makes for Joe Ficari and George Gilmore. You know, George was out. Now he's back. Uh, a year ago, Joe Ficari was disrespected by uh, members of the commission board. Uh, he was stripped of a lot of his um, uh, responsibilities, uh, lost a lot of the, uh, his liaison positions that he had for decades. And a year later, Joe Ficari is now the director of the Ocean County Board of Commissioners. And you know what? 
problem. I'm not knocking any any of these commissioners. They all deserve some knocks, in my opinion. You need some younger blood on there. Uh, Jenny Haynes comes to mind, but that's not the case right now. What we need to do in Ocean County, in Bacari's case, he's the director there, is stop the BS of every year another person becomes the director. We need some long-term thinking. I don't mean every year we got a different director and we're going to a different way. You need a county of Zec. Maybe Joe Ficari should become the county of Zec for Ocean County. You know, when you look at Hudson County and what Tom DeGee said managed to accomplish there, and Tommy's been there 2003, 2004. You know, he's retiring uh, this year. What is accomplished when you have an executive with a vision and the same vision year after year after year? You look at um, the Garini... Um, law Center, the, the Justice Center, excuse me, the Greeny Justice Center that's being built on Newark Avenue for you Jersey City people across the street from the old Brennan Courthouse. Uh, this thing would make the Avengers jealous. This is, we hopefully we got some pictures up there. Uh, yeah, you look at the county park system. Uh, there's probably not a better park system in the state of New Jersey, maybe the nation, than the Hudson County park system. You know, the Tom DeGees and the, Ocean, and the Hudson County commissioners they are truly dedicated to the parks. Um, Tom DeGee's got the county of Hudson out of rented facilities. If there's an office, their county office, it's in a county-owned building. Tom's not run, writing any rent checks. He'll write a mortgage check, but he's not writing, writing any rent checks. Whether it's uh, you know County Plaza, 830 Bergen Avenue, or the old Provident Bank, you know, whatever it is, DeGee's got out of rented properties. He's investing in the county of Hudson. Um, road and pedestrian safety, you know, the, the Vision Zero initiatives, Tom is doing that on Kennedy Boulevard and other county roads. I'm not big on the bump outs, that sort of thing, but I'm not the county of Zach. Uh, new prosecutor complex in uh, Secaucus, the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office finally has really good digs. There's a new golf course in Jersey City on uh, Route 1 and 9 by Sip Avenue. Uh, there's, if you remember the casino in the park, well, that's all been renovated, knocked down, and not even renovated, actually, completely there is the view in Lincoln Park. All this happened under Tom DeGeese because you had an executive, a long-term vision. And I'm forgetting a lot of the other accomplishments of Tom DeGeese. You have put a county exec, if you want to have the director of the commissioners, that's fine, but the director of the commission is goes for five years or so, so you can initiate. You know, you're trying, they're talking about a new courthouse in Ocean County. Look what the G's accomplished in Hudson County with the Greeny Justice Center. Yeah, actually, I've used a lot of time talking about that. All right, getting back to Mo Hill. Getting back to Mo Hill is next target. Who <laughs> you can take it to the bank. It's going to be uh, George Gilmore's next target will be Mo Hill and Mo Hill's new Republican club. You can take that to the bank. Let's break for commercial. I'll pick this up on the flip side. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage. Let us be your good friend. We're back. Tom's River Show here. I got to move quick because I got a lot of info here. You can be sure George Gilmore is going to do everything in his power to prevent 
Mo Hill from winning. He wants to see Mo Hill as a footnote, a one-term mayor footnote in uh, Tom Dribble history. Two names you're sure to hear is Jerry Ambrosio and Dan Roderick as challenges for uh, Mo Hill. Pay a lot of attention to Jerry on that because I think she's going to get the nod from George Gilmore. Uh, Dan Roderick, I know Dan, got good guy. I like Dan. Uh, loose cannon. I like that. Uh, I could see Dan moving up to uh, counsel at large in Tom's River with the support of George Gilmore. I think I just think George, in the long run, is going to go with Jerry there. The, to- the Tom River primary will include the mayor's office and the council at large. Bring the popcorn because this is going to be a very interesting campaign coming up, and you will see the power of Gilmore, and you will see Gilmore with his the smartest guy in the room when it comes to politics. If Gilmore's in the room, he is the smartest guy in the room in any kind of political meeting. Mo Hill is going to have a very difficult go getting reelected here, and it will be really interesting to watch. Hopefully I did the debates last year. Hopefully I'll do the debates again for the last election, rather, for uh, mayor in uh, Tom River. I did the GOP primaries here, and we did the uh, general election um, um, debates, live debates. We had... Um, was it Wall from uh, the Patch was the uh, moderator? All right, let's get to quick hits. Rite Aid on Route 37. I go to Rite Aid. I pick up cases of water for the studios when guests come in. And you, if you're watching our productions, you'll see water bottles on the sets uh, for the guests and the host, our divas. Uh, I'll go to Rite Aid and I'll get like four cases of water. You know, I'm not going to use that little basket with wheels they have. I want to use a shopping cart. So I'm getting four cases of water. Probably paper towels, some first aid stuff, maybe some snacks, some candy and cake, that sort of thing. And you want to use the shopping carts. These mini shopping carts they have. You see the picture of them. The employees are using them. They're doing stocking or relabeling or whatever. And you see them all over the damn store. And you see the picture there. I took a picture at the last time I was there. That's got to stop. So after the show, ends, I'm going to speak to Rite I've had this conversation with Rite Aid before. The employees got to stop using the friggin' shopping carts because that's for the customers. I don't want to see a senior walking around dragging this little uh, you know, shopping basket with wheels. Get some U-boats, get some flatbeds, whatever you need to use in the store to do the stocking. Don't use the damn shopping carts. Those are for the customers. And when you look at the employees, well, oh, we ought to do that. No, you're not to use the shopping carts. Those are there for the employees, for the customers. All right, on Christmas Day, my daughters were having Christmas down in Seaside Heights at the house here on Hamilton. Uh, my daughter's coming down, and she has a Jimmy, a 2000 Jimmy. So it's the first car she ever owned. We got it back in like 2009. Uh, the engine goes. And now the discussion is what are we going to do with the engine? But before that, you got to get towed off the parkway. AAA, if you do not have AAA service, you're kidding yourself. You know, we have the AAA for my daughters and I. AAA towed the unit to the AAA on Route 37. The service manager, Ed, and his crew were great there. Uh, we had to put a new starter in. Uh, we had the starter, it turned out we put the new starter in, found out you know, we had a bad piston, broken piston. Uh, AAA towed it over to CNC over on Clifton and Route 37 behind the Delta. You got Chris there. Uh, my daughter decided she's going to keep it, and she's going to. They have a Jasper engine replacement, and they're going to get a new long block, and they're going to transfer everything from the engine, everything that's good, onto the, the new block. And she'll have a new engine. And the rest of the Jimmy, there's no rust on it. She's in good shape. She, she didn't just put tires on it. You know, she's maintained it all these years. Uh, I was kind of leaning. Maybe she got a new car. And Gina's like, yeah, it's going to be a new car when I put an engine in there. So that's what we're doing. Chris and CNC is doing the engine. Hopefully another two weeks, the Jimmy will be done. Um, Seaside Heights, they're doing a boardwalk board replacement on the boardwalk in preparation for this season. Yeah, it's amazing. I've seen that boardwalk rebuilt from Sandy and then from the fire. Shows you how much tourism there is on that boardwalk. Foot traffic just wore the boards out. So they're working on replacing it. Last time I was up there, they were pretty much up by the beach coma where they're doing a the boardwalk replacement. They're, they're going to do like, you know, uh, a few blocks at a time every year to get the boardwalk in uh, excellent shape. And is a well-run boardwalk. You know, um, uh, Billy Ramboli, who's heading that up with the boardwalk that runs a deep DPW in uh, Seaside Heights, is a tremendous DPW uh, director. All right, we're going to take one more break before we end the show. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. This thing rips. Oh, it's 
so quick. There's a lot of punch packed into this Bronco Sport. It's got a ton of horsepower, I love it. All right, now we're getting hairy. Now we're getting the fun stuff. Yeah. I like how we can get over or around almost anything. Yeah, I did your ride. <laughs> Super dig it. It's gonna be a good day. We're back. You're watching the Tom's River Show, but actually you're now seeing the set of a new production we're bringing on called Cross County. Cross County is actually an old show. It's one of the first shows we did when we opened the Seaside Studio about seven years ago, and we're going to bring it back. You need to have a say in what's happening in Ocean County, and with the tourism coming on, we want to also promote what's going on in Monmouth County. So we're going to get into politics of Ocean County. We're going to pay a lot of attention to the commissioner board what's happening in all your fellow uh, communities here in Ocean and Monmouth County, and same thing with um, Monmouth County. We'll get involved with their politics. It kind of interacts with uh, what's going on in your world. So the more we can cover, the better off we are. You have a lot of races coming up. You have commissioner races. you got assembly races, state senate races. You should know everything that's going on, and that's what Cross County is going to do. We'll cover Ocean and Monmouth County, and of course, the Tom's River Show. All right, we're out of show. You're seeing this set. It's actually an old set. We had this set back in my, when I first started the studio back around 14 years ago. All right, I'm out of show. You'll be good. You'll be safe. I'll talk to you next week. Good night, Tom's River.